Okay, hello everybody. So today uh, I am going to discuss about chapter 1 and chapter 2. But I think po gagawa ko lang separate video for chapter 2 para itong video na to will be focusing only sa chapter 1. Okay? So chapter 1 is all about exercise for fitness. Uh, okay, pag-uusapan po natin ang physical activity and exercise. But before anything else, let us first differentiate physical activity from exercise. Ano nga ba po ang pagkakaiba ng physical activity and exercise? Okay. So when we say physical activity, it involves any bodily movements caused by muscular contractions that result in the expenditure of energy. It is usually classified according to its purpose such as occupational, transport-related, household, and recreational. Many people believe that one should engage in sports and exercise to be active, which is a misconception. In fact, sports and exercise are just part of the activities that can be classified under recreational physical activity. When we say exercise, it is a planned program of physical activities usually designed to improve physical fitness with purpose of increasing physical fitness level. So as we go on to our discussion, um, I'll be discussing about physical fitness level then. While physical activity is different from exercise, research shows that both physical activity and exercise can improve one's well-being. It should be noted that the protection conferred by being fit is higher than being physically active. So meron po tayo tinatawag na tatlong classification of exercise. Ano nga ba po ang tatlong classification of exercise? Starting with number one, we have the aerobic exercise. So aerobic exercise, it involves large muscle groups that performs rhythmic and continuous movement for a prolonged period of time in order to improve aerobic capacity. So mamaya po, pakatapos po nitong um, classification of exercise, i-discuss ko naman po sa inyo kung ano po ang aerobic capacity which is under the five health-related components of physical fitness. So example given, example given are swimming, biking, and dancing. So if you can notice, class, ang swimming, biking, and dancing, it involves large muscle groups, right? Kung baga, let's say for example, 80% of our muscles or 80% of our body is moving. Okay? So ito po, uh, aerobic exercise, ginagawa ito po para ma-improve yung aerobic capacity. So mamaya, babalikan natin to si aerobic exercise para mas maintindihan nyo po kung sino po ba si aerobic capacity. So the next classification of exercise is what we call resistance exercise. Pag sinabi natin resistance exercise, it required the muscle to contract against an external load to improve muscular strength, muscular endurance, and bone strength. So napaka-obvious class, no? Uh, that resistance exercise targets only the muscle. So, ang ini-improve niya po is the muscular strength and the muscular endurance. Okay, the example given ng mga exercise is the barbell. Okay, uh, ito yung mga exercise that improves the muscle. Uh, for example, the push-up or the curl-ups. Next. Okay, we have also stretching exercise. Pag sinabi naman natin, a stretching exercise increase the elasticity of muscles and tendons surrounding, surrounding the joint in order to improve flexibility. So ito po, napaka-importante nito na stretching exercise. So sa tatlong classification of exercise po, the stretching exercise is the most important one. And ito po dapat yung inuuna lagi. Bago po tayo mag-perform ng aerobic exercise or ng resistance exercise, kailangan po mauna muna po ang stretching exercise because kumbaga parang warm up. No? Kasi yung katawan po natin, is, kumbaga parang natutulog yan. Kailangan muna natin kisingin. Mapapawis muna tayo. Kailangan muna natin painitin yung katawan natin and the muscles. And also, nakalagay dito that um, it increases the elasticity of the muscles. No? Um, kapag ka ganun po, ma-avoid ma natin or ma-prevent natin yung mga injuries na pwede nating makuha kapag nag-perform na tayo ng mga exercises. Okay, so talking about physical fitness. Ayan. So, physical fitness is a condition. Tandaan po natin ang salitang condition, okay? It is a condition that allows the body to effectively cope with the demands of daily activities and still has the energy to enjoy other activities. So, I have a question for you, class. Do you think you are a physically fit or you are a physically fit person? Sa tingin niyo po ba, uh, physically fit kayo? 
Yes or no? Okay, so if your answer is yes, then great, no? Ay pagpatuloy po natin. But if your answer is no, try to think po kung saan tayo nagdalak na pwede natin ma-improve pa para maging uh, physically fit tayo uh, na tao, okay? So, let's now move on to the health-related component of fitness. So, ito na po yung tinutukoy ko sa inyo kanina. So, health-related component of fitness has something to do with the three classifications of exercise. So, starting with number one, the aerobic capacity. So, ito po, namit na siya kanina, si aerobic capacity. It is the ability of the heart, lungs, and blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to the working muscles efficiently in order to sustain prolonged rhythmical exercises like, for example, running. Okay? So, yung nabanggit po kanina mga exercises which is the aerobic exercises, yung swimming, biking, and dancing. Kapag pata, palagi po natin yung ginagawa, na-improve po natin si aerobic capacity. So, what does it do? Because aerobic capacity, siya yung may abilidad. Okay? Ito, nakalagay. Ab ability of the heart, lungs, and blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to the working muscles. Para po, masustain natin yung mga prolonged rhythmical exercises, katulad po ng pagtakbo. Kung may mga iniidolo po kayo mga athletes, no? yung mga sumasama sa mga triathlon, so masyado na pong max yung level ng aerobic capacity nila because continuous yung training nila. Okay, so the secret there is continuous po yung training nila. No? So moving on to the next one is what we call muscular strength. So muscular strength, it is the ability of the muscle to generate the greatest force. Ayan. So ito po, baka kasi ma-confuse kayo sa muscular strength and the muscular endurance. Okay? So ito po si muscular endurance, um, it, it, it is the ability of the muscles to resist the fatigue when performing multiple repetitions of a submaximal load. Okay, uh, example given, si Juan, kaya niyang magbuhat ng isang sako ng bigas. So that is, he, uh, that is uh, Juan, uh, Juan's muscular strength, no? Yan, yun yung ability niya to exert the, gener uh, the greatest force in him, in him. So, kaya niya magbuhat ng isang sako ng bigas. Yun yung muscular strength ni Juan. Pero, talking about muscular endurance, ilang sako ng bigas ang kaya niyang bitbitin ng sunod-sunod. Okay, let's say for example, may limang sako ng bigas. Na kaya niya yung isa, na kaya niya yung dalawa, na kaya niya yung tatlo, pero bakit pag dating sa pang-apat is nangihina na ng muscle? Okay, wala nang lakas. Kumbaga parang uh, wala nang energy si Juan. Ibig sabihin, yung muscular endurance ni Juan is hanggang tatlong sako lang ng bigas. So in order for it to improve, kailangan po natin mag-perform ng mga abdominal curl-ups and push-ups or mga gym. Sa gym po, di ba? Sa barbells. Yan. It improves our muscular strength and muscular endurance. And going back doon sa three classifications of exercise, ito pong dalawang ito is under siya ng resistance exercise. Okay. So uh, everything or every exercises that talks about muscle um, has something to do with the resistance exercise. Okay po? So moving on to the next one is what we call flexibility. So it is the ability to move a joint without pain over its entire range of motion. Sit and reach. So ito po, it's not, for example, no, um, marunong ka mag-split, marunong ka mag-bending. Okay, tama yun. Flex, and that's being flexible. No? So talking about being a normal person, no? So, paano tayo magiging flexible? So, in order for us to be flexible sa lahat ng bagay, kailangan po natin seryosuhin lagi yung stretching exercise. Okay? Because it can help us a lot to improve our flexibility. So, the next one is the body composition. It refers to the total makeup of the body using the concept of two component models, the lean body mass and the body fat or the waist circumference. Body composition mainly talks about our posture. So given na po sa inyo na teenagers kayo, is medyo bold pa yung katawan nyo. Medyo ma, hindi pa po masakit yung likod nyo. Okay? So ngayon po habang hindi, wala pa pong nangyayaring uh, masama sa likod natin, kailangan po natin i-strict yung likod natin lagi. Okay? From time to time, kailangan natin mag-stretch. Kasi since we are having online classes, so maghapon tayong nakaupo, maghapon tayong nakadungdung sa uh, sa phone or sa internet or sa, sa laptop. So, right after po ng uh, discussion, you can stand up, you can do some stretching. Okay? You do walk, uh, maglakad-lakad ka, and uminom ka po lagi ng tubig. Okay? Because it will help you improve your body composition. Okay? So, those are the uh, five health-related components of physical fitness. 
Okay, so why is it hard to change unhealthy habits? Bakit nga pa po napakahirap sa atin na baguhin yung healthy habits, di ba? So siguro sasabihin yung nakasanayan natin, right? Ito na yung nakasanayan natin. So lahat ng ano, lahat din ng masama, masarap, di ba? Or lahat ng bawal, masarap. Yun. So kumbaga parang mahirap talaga sa atin mag-adjust. Lalo na kapag nasanay talaga tayo may nag-good morning sa atin o kaya may nag-text na kain ka na. Um, wag papagutom, di ba? Ay mali, ay mali ba? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nadala lang ako ng emotion ko, guys. Yan. So kapag ito po, mga unhealthy habits, kailangan po talaga natin yung baguhin. I know it is hard, pero hindi po siya imposible. Okay, yan. Changing an old habit is an arduous task, but not an impossible one. So yan, um, napakahirap niya pong gawin, pero hindi po imposible. Basta, iisipin natin, sarili natin na positibo lang tayo lagi, magagawa po natin yan. Kasi kapag iniisip po natin class na uh, may, mahirap, mahirap po talaga yan. Okay? So, it's all in our mind. So, the first step is to recognize the practice of unhealthy habit that goes beyond knowledge of its existence. Kailangan lang naman po talaga natin is intindihin kung ano po ba yung masamang maidudulot nun sa katawan natin. Okay po? So, ito po, mayroon tayo tinatawag na transtheoretical model ni Prochaska and de Velesen. Okay? We have five stages that can help us determine or that can help us um, know kung saan na po tayong stage of changing. Of, uh, changing. Okay? Yan. So, the number one stage is what we call the pre-contemplation stage. Pag sinabi pong pre-contemplation stage or the first stage, if he or she does not recognize, take note of the word or the phrase does not recognize the presence of an unhealthy habit and the importance of changing his or her behavior. Yan. So, kapag hindi pa po niya alam, for example, si Juan ulit. So, si Juan is mahilig siyang mag-yossi. Mahilig siyang manigarilyo. Yan. So, syempre, uh, mahirap na yung baguhin kasi nga nakasanayan niya na. So, si Juan is suffering from pre-contemplation stage. Nasa stage siya ng pre-contemplation. Hindi niya pa alam kung ano yung mga pwedeng mangyari sa kanya. So, going on to the next one, which is the contemplation stage. Once the individual becomes dedicated, okay, yun yung term doon, dedicated, to the idea of adapting a positive behavior, he or she enters the next stage of change, which is the contemplation stage. Let's say, for example, si Juan, mahilig siyang manigarilyo, right? Ngayon, is yung kaibigan niya na-diagnose na may lung cancer, stage 4. Yun. So si Juan, natakot na siya. Like, hala, yun ang, siya yung lagi kong nakakasamang nagja-jam, ganyan-ganyan. Okay? So natakot si Juan. So ngayon, napag-isip-isip niya na ayokong mangyari yun sa akin kasi may pangarap pa ako, may pamilya ako, ganun-ganun. So ngayon, si Juan is napag-isip-isip niya na what if kaya baguhin ko na tong habit na to kasi ayoko nga mangyari yun. Okay? Nakara nakadama po siya ng, ng takot. Alam niya na kung ano yung masamang may dudulot sa kanya. Okay? Alam niya yung mga pwedeng um, outcomes na ah, hindi maganda. Okay? So yan na po yung sa contemplation stage. Dedicated na si Juan na magbago. So, sir, ano naman po ang preparation stage? So, pag sinabi natin preparation stage, once an individual is convinced, okay, convinced to make the change, he or she starts to prepare for the actual date and the time to start the new behavior. The preparations might include setting a date on a calendar or planner, telling a family and friends about the new behavior, and asking help from friends who made the change. So itong preparation stage from the word prepare, no? Ipiprepare mo na po yung sarili mo for the, uh, for your goal na magbabago ka na nga. So paano mo to gagawin? So setting a date or calendar. So let's say for example, um, kasi syempre hindi mo naman talaga yung may iwasan, no? Because nakasanayan mo siya. So imbis na isang kaha ang naubos mo sa isang araw, for example, isang stick na lang ngaya, ganun. Kung baga parang um, pat unti-unti mo siyang baguhin, wag mo bibiglain kasi alam kong baka mahirapan ka eh. Okay, so unti-untiin mo lang siyang ano, unti-untiin mo lang siyang um, what do you call this? Uh, baguhin. Okay po? Yan. O kaya naman is magpatulong ka sa kaibigan mong alam mong nag nagbago. Okay, yung alam mong adik dati sa sigarilyo pero ngayon nagbago na siya. So you ask ano, um, suggestions or tips na ginawa niya po dati para po makatulong sa iyo. Okay? So, moving on sa next one or the fourth stage is what we call the action stage. The action stage is the day the individual initiates the new behavior. 
Ayan. Pag sinabi natin initiates, kumbaga parang ginawa niya na. Okay? Huwag lang po tayo puro salita. Kailangan natin gawin. Action speaks louder than words. Okay? So pag sinabing mahal mo siya, kailangan ipadama mo sa kanya. ba? Diba? Pag sinabi mong hindi mo siya iiwan, huwag mo siyang iiwan. Kailangan gawin mo. ba? Diba? Ay, sorry, sorry. Mali na rin. Okay? Um, na ano na naman ako guys. Uh, sorry, na-distract na naman ako. Nadala na naman ako sa aking emosyon. Ayan. So according to research, a new behavior has to be consistently performed for at least six months. Take note, uh, class, for at least six months daw before it becomes part of the system. So for example, um, nagbago ka simula January. So count ka ng six months so hanggang June. So simula January hanggang June, hindi ka naninigarilyo na. Ibig sabihin po, um, nagbabago ka na talaga. Kung baga para pwede mo na siyang i-consider as new behavior. Okay? So, pwede ka na pumunta sa maintenance stage. So, pag sinabi natin maintenance stage, kailangan mo na po i-maintain yung ginagawa mo mga changes. Okay? Let's say, for example, yan. So, the temptation to backslide is great test during this stage. So, the next stage occurs when the individual has consistently practiced the new behavior for more than six months. So, ang tendency po dito, guys, where the tendency to backslide the new Uh, the old habits is minimal. So kapag ginawa nyo na siyang 6 months, o kaya 6 months na kayo hindi naninigarilyo, no? um, that ang tendency po na pwede kang bumalik sa old habit mo or sa bad habit mo is very minimal na lang. Napaka-konti na lang po. Okay? So do you understand? Ayan. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. And I hope this will help you guys. And um, siguro hindi ko naman ito gagawin lagi. Uh, just for today, uh, kasi nasa fourth week pa lang tayo ng online class and I know naman na yung iba po is napuputol, di ba? Or kaya mahina yung internet connection nila, kaya po hindi po nila masyado naiintindihan yung mga sinasabi ko. Okay, so I'm giving consideration uh, to those students po who is suffering from um, poor internet connection and doon po sa mga hindi po talaga nakakapasok because nga, wala pong signal or walang kuryente or paputol-putol po yung uh, internet connection. Okay? So, thank you so much guys. Good luck sa inyong examination.